Welcome everyone to week eight, day two. So I'm gonna push out a uh, demo on templates for you guys. And if you guys could all log in on the server, if you're not already, I will um, background sudo deploy homework csi41 template demo. Uh, okay, so if you guys wish, please go onto the server right now. And this is actually a really important concept. So I'm not just gonna lecture on templates, I'm gonna have uh, us work through it together. Okay, so go ahead and compile test.cc and you can see there's some code here. So what I'd like for you guys to do is open it up and you can see that there are different, um, <laughs> these guys are set to zero, that's funny. Plus two is four. So what we've got here is um, auto add is the first thing. So you can see that you can have the same function. In this case, it's called auto add. And this one will take any type parameter. This one takes just a bob. And so what C++ will do is if you uh, if you have a bob passed in, it will pick the specific specialization of the function that matches best. If you don't have one, then it will go to the generic one. Okay. So uh, in this case, they're doing the same thing, but I could feasibly switch this around or something. Uh, just have it, uh, I don't know, A plus B plus A plus B. And then it will um, it will if you pass in a bob, it'll do a di something different than if you pass in an integer. Okay, so are you guys all looking at this right here? This is line uh, forty three of template demos, template demo. Yeah, the tilde, the tilde command, thank you, Muya, means your home directory. Was Robotech the birth of weeb culture? Yeah, I would say so. It's when people really started. That's, yeah, really the, the, the watershed when America started paying attention to Japanese animation, things like that. All right, so... Um, how do you get the numbers on the side? It's like show num or something like that. I don't, I don't usually use that. Set number. But uh, you don't really need, you don't really need numbers. You see right down here, it has the, the line number. Right. And, if you, and if I tell you to go to line 43, then there's, a couple ways you can do this. If you uh, vim main dot test.cc, if you do plus 43, that will take you to line 43 in the code. Boom. There it is. Another way you can do it is if you are inside of the uh, file itself, you can type 43 shift G, and that takes you line 43. So 43 shift G, capital G, no matter where you are in the code, 43 shift G takes you to the correct line. There's, there's a lot of different ways of doing it. So, um, yeah, I, I personally don't like um, this because then if you copy and paste code, it copies the, the line numbers as well. This, this is good enough for me. Okay. 
So uh, this is a templated add function. It can add any two types, any two types that have a plus operator defined on them. If you don't have a plus operator defined, then you will get what's called a temp template substitution error. And uh, I can show you what that looks like. Let's go ahead and comment out the Bob specialization here. And let's comment out Bob's plus operator. So if we try doing that, then what's going to happen is invalid operands to type Bob and Bob. Yeah. So it's it's not going to like that very much because down here we have Bob X equals four, Bob Y equals four, and it's going to try calling the Bob specialization on it, passing in. Uh, Z and W, which will get converted to Bob's by the constructor. Um, uh, yeah, Z and w is fine. Um, I can pass an X. X is already a Bob. W is an int, but if you try passing in an int where it expects a Bob, then you can see the constructor gets called. Right. Do you guys remember how we talked about that? How constructors can be used as implicit operators for things? You guys remember that? So if I pass in five when the function is expecting a bob, then it will con it will call the uh, constructor on it. So we'll try to access template cd. It's just in your home directory. So just cd into template demo. I push it out to your home directory. Um. So, so if we pass in Z and W here, this will call the integer specialization of auto add. And in fact, if you delete that, it'll actually deduce the type for you. This is actually not necessary here. Uh, this one is necessary because I'm passing in a Bob for the first parameter and an int for the second parameter. So it will, you need to specify I'm doing the Bob version of it and then it will convert W into a, a Bob. Now this will not compile now because I've removed the I've removed the plus operator and you get what's called a template substitution error. So template substitution errors, look at how many lines of code that is. That is unbelievable. How many lines of code we get from uh, not having a plus operator is what, it, is what it amounts to. So if we pipe the output of that through word count by line, we see we just got 249 lines of error messages. This is, uh, I, I told you guys back in the late 80s, early 90s, that error messages were terrible for templates. Guess what? Some things never change. And so um, because I took out the plus operator for Bob, it's trying to call the plus operator on Bob. It can't find it. And you get blah. 249 lines of error messages. And, and this is frankly the worst thing about C++. It's not pointers. It's not, I don't know, needing a semicolon at the end of a class. Nope. The worst thing about C++ is the error messages you get when using templates. And so if you don't need to use a template on something, uh, I wouldn't, right? If you if you always know what your type's going to be, um, a lot of times it's not worth the pain that comes with a template. So uh, you might look at this and, and, and you, you might, you might, I wouldn't recommend it, you might actually try to decipher what's going on here. And so we just tried compiling this code. Do, do you guys understand what the problem is? Uh, I know I'm talking fast. See, Bob, uh, Bob's supposed to have a plus operator, right? That will add two Bobs together. But what is happening here is that I've, I've taken out the plus operator, so it can't add them together. Do you guys understand why this doesn't compile? I'm calling a function called auto add. Auto add just adds two things together, but I have taken out the plus operator. Do you guys see why that doesn't work? By default, C++ does not know how to add two of whatever class you make together. Can't find the plus operator. 
Now you would think C++ would say, hey, I couldn't find a plus operator for Bob. Done. Right? That's all it needs to say. That's all it needs to say. Instead, or you can do what you have here, like uh, uh, COC is saying invalid operands binary expression, Bob and Bob. Like that's not super helpful, but there you go. It, it's one line of code, right? One line of error messages. Uh, however, when you try compiling this, because there's no plus operator, you get this bit of garbage. And if you tried reading the error messages, you would be very, very confused. Why? Look, look, professor, the error is actually taking place inside of complex, inside of the C standard library. Note, candidate, template, const expert, std complex, std operator plus, std complex, operator plus. Note, template argument deduction substitution failed. Note, Bob is not derived from complex. So a lot of students over the years have been like, well, clearly we need to make, clearly this has something to do with the complex type. Wrong. It has absolutely zero to do with complex numbers. Zero to do with it. And you can see, you're going to see the word complex. What it's doing, it is going, it is trying every single possible thing that it can think of to substitute Bob in for. Like, let's try converting it to a complex. That didn't work. Let's try converting it to a, um, uh, what's another, a string. Can we convert Bob to a string? Nope. Okay. Let's tell the user we tried converting Bob to a string, even though that makes no sense whatsoever. Let's, let's tell the user we tried converting Bob to a, a, a complex number, even though that makes no sense whatsoever. We're just gonna notify the user of every single thing that we thought could possibly have a plus operator on it. And we're gonna try all of them. And we're gonna tell the user everything that we tried that failed. Okay, and that's why you have 250 uh, lines of errors. It is D-U-M dumb. Okay. It is frankly the worst part of C++. Okay. And uh, yeah. And so a lot of students are like, well, there's a problem in the complex class. Now it has nothing to do with complex. It's nothing to do with complex. Uh, Bob is not derived from basic string. It has nothing to do with string. There's not an error in the string class. I mean, there probably is somewhere, but not here. Uh, it is, it is a hundred percent the problem of the compiler and the compiler being very, very helpful. And notice these things are not errors, right? These are notes. It's just saying, hey, by the way, I tried this and it didn't work. <clears throat> and if you scroll up, it tried converting it to uh, a, a char star, a C style string. It tried converting it to a basic string. Uh, it tried converting it to a, re a reverse iterator, a move iterator. None of those mean anything. And there's not even a compile flag that I'm aware of that will turn those off. I've actually tried patching G++ before just to get rid of those messages for you guys because they are so absurdly stupid and completely unhelpful. Completely unhelpful. None of you were trying to make your classes into reverse or, or remove iterators. N none of you. But it will give you 250. And so what you have to do is you have to go up to the very top, scroll up to the top, and you can see the actual error message. That's the actual, that's the actual error right there. There's no match for operator plus. There you go. Bob and Bob. There's no match for operator plus. You don't have an operator plus. Easy. Right? And then it's got, so it's got uh, two lines of useful stuff and then 240 lines of template deduction substitution field. Yay. Thank you, compiler. Thank you. Not even a compiler flag to turn off the template uh, substitution errors. When I, when I tried looking this up on Stack Overflow, they're like, you got to patch the source code yourself. Why the hell is there not a flag for that? There's a flag for everything in G++. Is there any time these messages would be useful? Probably. I've never seen one. Probably. Somewhere out there, somebody cares about it. Nobody I've ever met. There's probably some C++ expert saying, well, there was just one time. And, you know, but um, yeah, sure, turn it on then. You know, if you want to see the template substitution errors, turn it on. You know, have it be off by default, G++ people. Come on. And if we do Clang, let's see if Clang's any better. 
playing is 64 lines instead of 100 249 lines so let's see what clang outputs clang is an alternative um, compiler to g plus uh, plus note candidate function template not viable requires simple argument underscore underscore x but two arguments were provided what the hell does that mean dude what the hell does that mean and, and again it looks like the problem is in complex line 450 or complex number line 349 note candidate template ignored great thank you for telling me that right note could not match basic string against bob cool cool story bro i don't care and it's just one after another i i tried this and it, it didn't work i tried i tried this and it didn't work you know and then if we get up to the very top you can see that's our actual error message so one thing you can do one thing you can do is say this so if you uh, pipe the output with error that's what the ampersand means it means the standard error so that pipes the standard output and the standard error into less then you will get your error messages at the top top of the file uh, pipe it through more maybe nope it's still scrolling up huh weird it doesn't have the right s okay there it is so you can do that to see the top of it or you can pipe it through head head will give you the top 10 lines that's a if you just want to see the top 10 error lines of your error then that that's a that's a neat trick right there yep uh a question who took the time to type the reasons what it does is it, it see what happens is that when you have a template it generates all the different candidates right that might work because remember constructors for better or worse can be used to convert things right and so they're trying to see if there is a constructor that goes from bob into string and if there is it would convert it to a string and then use the strings plus operator on it uh and so it generates all these candidates and then uh it goes through all of them and if it couldn't find any candidate then what it uh, that, that works then it prints all the, there's a function just called print candidates or something along those lines and the print candidates function just literally prints those 250 lines of errors. It just prints all the different things they tried. It didn't work. It's it's a very niche um, use for it. All you really care about is that there's no plus operator. Um, yeah, it's it's all it's all. Um, yeah, I I actually have found the point in G plus plus where it does that nonsense. And uh, I was thinking about just making a version for you guys, but. Uh, when I compiled it, it didn't work, so, I don't know. G++ is a massive, like, compiling G++ takes, like, a long time. So, uh, when it didn't work, I just went, eh, and gave up on it. Okay, so let's go into template demo. At one point, somebody had to give some error message reasoning it out. Uh, I don't know. Uh, basically, the reason for it is what I told you. The compiler generates a bunch of candidates, possibilities that might work. Maybe we can convert it from a Bob to a complex because complex is a plus operator. Um, so it generates all those possibilities. And then if none of them work, then it just prints the possibilities. But unfortunately, that spams the user with all of these very useless error messages that we absolutely do not care about. Um, all right, so uh, lesser. So this here is called a macro, okay? So this is how we do in C, okay? So the, uh, the C language predates C++. Pretty much everything in C can be done in C++, very few exceptions. Uh, you can basically take most C programs and run in C++ and it'll run the same. It's 99% almost, it's backwards compatible. Um, this is how we would do constants in C. Hashtag define max size 100. And what that will do is anytime the word max size appears in the code below, it will put in the number 100. And what this is, is a macro. And so what this is going to do is anytime the word old lesser appears, then it will substitute, this is x, 
this is y, apple is x, banana is y, it will substitute this code here. Okay. And so it will put apple in here, it'll put banana in here, do the less than operation on them, compare them, and uh, if the result is true, it returns true, otherwise it returns false, which is technically unnecessary. You could just put this in here. So this is, this is though, how you would do uh, templates in C, more or less. You could have a macro that would generate um, generate code for you, which is kind of the same idea of what we're doing with a macro when you have a, or with a template. We have a template that generates code for you. So when you have when you have this, T is a non-entity. It's a blank. It's a fill in the gaps. And so when I say auto add angle bracket Bob, what happens is the compiler copies and pastes this code and puts Bob in everywhere T appears. Okay, it's a mad lib. It just fills it in for you. The, and if you do auto add with int, then it will generate another copy of the function with int as the parameter. And so templates generate code for you. That's why you can't compile them. Um, you can't you can't do separate compilation with them. In R is the word old lesser is isn't yellow. Did you highlight it? Uh, I might have a different. Oh yeah, I was searching for it. Yeah, so it highlights the code when you search for it. Uh, but I also might be using a different color scheme. It's possible. Also. Okay, so this is how things would would be done back in the C days. That's how you do a template. It's very dicey. Macros are really kind of. Eh, eh. I mean, I've written them. I've used them. They're still needed today in C++ to a certain extent. But a, a big push in the C++ world has been to try to eliminate every need for the uh, preprocessor as possible because it's a gnarly artifact of the 1970s. All this hashtag include stuff, that's all from the C preprocessor as well. And uh, we're trying to get rid of those with uh, modules. That's coming on. Uh, C++ 20 introduced modules, which is a new way of doing includes and uh, they're not really done yet, so nobody really knows how it's actually going to work in practice. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, but this is how we used to do constants. Nowadays, we use const, right? This is how we used to do templates. Now we use templates, right? So um, is macro level three coding? No, it's level negative one coding. It's, uh, I mean, like I said, you still kind of got to, like if, if you're going to become like a C++ person, like I guess at some point you'll need to learn those. But as, as C++ progresses, the need to learn all these kind of preprocessor tricks kind of kind of goes down over time. Deliberately. Like that's a deliberate direction they've been taking the, the language. What is a macro? Uh, this is a, it looks like a function, right? It looks like a function. That's a function name. It's got two parameters, has no types on it whatsoever. And what it actually does, this is part of the preprocessor. The preprocessor is actually a separate program that runs prior to the compiler running, and it will actually modify your code. This modifies your code. So what the preprocessor does here is anytime it sees the word max size, uh, let's say uh, data be max size by default for whatever reason. Uh, anytime you see the word max size, it will, the preprocessor runs before the compiler. It's like search and replace. Every time the word max size appears within the, the, the file below, except in strings, if it's in double quotes, it won't do it. Um, but anytime it sees the word max string in the, in the code below, it will search and replace that and replace it with the number 100. And so it does not follow the rules of the of the language, um, I could do this if I wanted. See how it works? It's a search and replace. So, do you, did you see this horrible monstrosity I just did here? I put a semicolon there. <laughs> and so now this line has a semicolon that you can't see on it. Like these, all of all of these preprocessor tricks. If you do them properly, they're they're all right. You know, like they're all right. Like 
this is fine, honestly. It's the same thing as constant max size equals 100. It's the same thing. Um, although this won't work because this will get substituted to be 100 because of this. So this, this C++ code here is saying constant 100 equals 100. Again, creates problems, creates problems. So all of these preprocessor things, all they are is text manipulation things. So like when you have a hashtag include, what it does is it opens up this header file and copies and pastes the entire file into your file. And it's incredibly wasteful, right? There's, there's really no reason you need to be compiling uh, you know, vector every time you use a vector, you know what I mean? Like, but it literally copies and pastes the entire vector file into your file. And if vector includes things, it copies those in as well. And so what happens is that your code goes from like, you could have like hello world and hello world is actually like, um, I don't know, like a thousand lines of code because of all the things that you've included in. So, um, yeah, and so a macro, a macro, like if you have auto hotkey, let's see if do I have it installed here. Uh, auto hotkey, no. I have it, in, I have it on here somewhere. Uh, auto hotkey is a uh, macroing tool for Windows, and you you can use it to automate uh, things, right? You can have it open a Firefox window and go here and type in something in a form and hit return for you. It's auto hotkey, is super neat. It's a neat tool. And you can use it to automate a lot of your tasks in the office and things like that. That's a macro. It's anything that automates things for you. Here, uh, a macro is specifically um, in the C preprocessor, like Muya said. It is a way of doing non-typed functions. So, um, yeah, it's not good. I mean, it's good. I mean, if you need it, but this this way is better, right? So this way, it makes sure that. C that T, so A and B are both the same type here. They, there's no guarantee they're the same type, right? And so C++ gives you stricter guarantees. Whereas this, you could pass in the number five in hello world, and it would try generating code for it. And so what this does is anytime you see old lesser, the word old lesser with two parameters passed in, it will replace that with this. And so down below I say old lesser apple comma banana, it actually replaces that thing with this highlighted text here, where it will be open paren, open paren, apple, close paren, less than, banana, close paren, question mark. So it actually, it's a search and replace thing. And so that's how the C people did templates, because there's no types on these things. And no types is dangerous. You might as well use Python at that point. <laughs> um, shortcuts to get things, uh, yeah. Yeah, or, or just automating things. Um, for example, in uh, Path of Exile, uh, Path of Exile is a great role-playing game, one of the best action role-playing games ever made, but the developers have never gotten around to building a auction house, even though the game is based on trading between players. Um, they've never made an auction house. And so what you have to do is you have to highlight an object that you have, hit Control c to copy it, go into a website, paste the description of your item in there, hit estimate price, and the thing will run a neural net that based on similar items and similar pricing, da -da 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 -da, this is worth two exalts, you know? And then uh, that's tedious. And so people made an auto hotkey script to automate that whole process for you. So you just be inside of Path of Exile, hit auto hotkey, it copies it, goes to the website, hits paste, grabs the output from the website, pastes it back in the game. And um, um, that's that. Those kinds of scripts are what make the game work because the developer is too lazy uh, to do an auction house. Uh, that's what it amounts to. So um, <clears throat> programmers are lazy, right? We don't like doing repetitive things, right? We want to do new and cool things. We want to work hard, but we don't want to repeat ourselves. And so uh, macros, auto hotkey, that kind of stuff can be used to automate keystrokes and things like that. Here though, <clears throat> it's uh, <clears throat> it's being yeah it's it's automation, but really in this context, it's a function with no types, and so it's it's the C way of doing templates. 
So uh, I think on your own time, you can go through this and kind of see the different examples I have. I've got a linked list class here, kind of, it's a weird linked list. Um, you can see that this is a pointer to a person of the same type. So without, without a T here, it means the same thing. Um, and so when you're within template class T, it'll put a T in by default if you need to, but you can also use other types as well. That's fine. Uh, data is of type T. Um, yeah. So let's put operator plus back in and it will compile fine. So scroll through this. Um, there's a lot of code in here that I generated for you guys. So you can kind of get some experience um, making templates work and stuff like that. I do want to get on with the lecture today. So, um, so your next homework assignment is going to be on, uh, you're going to be doing RPG 41. So that's, that's your next homework assignment. Um, let's push that out to you guys. Pseudo deploy homework CSI 41. Uh, RPG 41. Okay. Let's see if you do RPG 41. And so the code that I've given you guys by default has a scrolling map on it. It, it randomly generates a map. You can use the arrow keys to walk around. Uh, there's water, there's walls, um, there's treasure to pick up, there's monsters to fight, all that kind of stuff. Apparently it doesn't do any of it, but I have given you guys a starting point. Um, and when you get close to the corners of the map, you see I'm at X and Y location down there. When you get close to the corner of the map, it stops scrolling. So, when you get close, it stops scrolling. Otherwise, uh, it'll scroll the map. It's a 100 by 100 map. And currently, um, you can walk through the walls and walk through water, stuff like that, which you will need to fix. Now, you don't have to use this necessarily, but I, I'd probably use it as a good starting place. Uh, Dwarf Fortress Light, yeah, yeah, exactly. Except, um, except not Dwarf Fortress, right? That's that's not a it's not a homework assignment you can do in a week, <clears throat> right? So, what you're going to do for this assignment is you are going to be partnered up with someone. Uh, I will copy and paste the groups from last time, and uh, they're still called imaginary groups, I guess, because it doesn't, or I guess I can just randomly generate groups. Yeah, I'll randomly generate groups, and then if you want to have a partner this time, message me. So uh, phone lines are open. Uh, if you want a specific partner, message me on Discord, and I will uh, partner you up with the person of your choice. Call in now, spaces are limited. Cool. And if you don't want to be partnered with somebody, let me know also. Get all of that drama, their personal drama. Okay, group set, uh, group set name, RPG 41. Allow self sign up, I guess we could do that. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do self sign up. So uh, I will create uh, I don't know, 40 groups, limit groups to two members. Yep. So what you'll see on uh, Canvas is, let's see if I can do this without showing the names of students. There. So what you'll see is uh, if you go to the people section that there is uh, 40 groups, all of which are open and available. So uh, if you have a specific person you want to work with, then just tell, hey, let's sign up for group 16 together. Put yourselves in there. And if you don't, then just join a random group, like, uh, I don't know, group two, whatever. And, uh, and then maybe somebody will join you. You guys understand? So try and get that done by like tomorrow. It doesn't show. RPG 41 groups. CSI 41 people groups. RPG 41. Will there be X credit? Yeah, we'll go over it in a second. 
Um, it does show. Okay. And so you should be able you should be able to sign up for one of these groups. Let me know if you can't. here yeah so uh yeah, everybody just message me just uh sign your just message each other sign up for a specific number group and uh it'll it'll be easier that way all right uh if you don't want to be partnered then yeah i guess that's fine too um but um still put yourself into a group i don't know you might find yourself getting partnered with somebody i guess if you do that probably better for you if you get partnered in terms of your personal development and stuff like that. Okay. So, uh, yeah, just find a, find a group that isn't being used and sign yourself up. I'll minimize that and I will go through the world now. Uh, so you must have a functional world map that shows a view of the game world. Hey, that's already done for you. Cool. Um, you must be able to walk the heroes around the world map. You must pick up treasure. You must bounce off obstacles. The uh, hashtags are walls. And uh, the uh, tildes are water. Technically, if you wanted to, you could have them swim through water, I guess. But uh, make the walls solid. It's awkward to be able to walk through walls, you know. And you need to fight monsters by walking over them. So when you walk over the monster tile, it should switch to the um, combat screen about down here so uh, you must create a class using proper class design so uh, oh, uh, tomorrow at three o'clock right Moya three o'clock is that the uh, time of the I think so yeah I think so three tomorrow at three o'clock <laughs> sounds right and Moya, are you gonna record the are you gonna record the lecture for those that can't make it that is the plan um, yeah okay. uh, but I'm supposed to leave out the code Leave out what code? The code for the exam? Or not? What do you mean? For for retaking? Oh. The um, competency exam? No, just just uh, drop the code at some point within the within the uh, within the thing. And then they'll, so, they'll, so they'll then they'll have to watch it anyway. Oh just just randomly? Yeah, I don't have it at the end because the if somebody wants to skip the whole thing, they'll just skip to the end and see if they can find the code. So make them watch it. You just, you just I, like talking about the rule of three. And by the way, the magic word is showdown. You know, whatever. Oh, it is. now you just gave it away. That's not going to be the password. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, so that's tomorrow at three o'clock. Mui is going to go over classes again. Proper class design. Rule of three. Uh, destructors. Right, Mui. Uh, yeah, I'll talk about the structures. It's, I'll go over the pra the uh, competency exam. Uh, oh my god, uh, other competency exams uh, uh, about classes. Getters, setters, constructors. Getters, setters, pods. Uh, pods operators, stuff. maybe. Mm. Uh, operator overloads, mm. maybe even embedded classes if we have time. Yeah, yeah. The, the the that's that is the most important takeaway from this entire class is just how to make a. How to make a class. It's a class about classes. Ha. Ha ha. Okay, so thank you, Maria. Um, yeah, so for this assignment, you must... Yeah, ha ha. <laughs> uh, for this assignment, you must make a class for heroes and monsters using proper class design. So in other words, you must have a constructor. You have, must have private member variables. You must have getters and setters. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. Um, so... Um, you have to have at least these things here. Um, if it reminds you of Pokemon, it, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's probably based at least partly on, on Pokemon's game design. 
Uh, so every hero, every monster has to have health. How much damage it does on an attack, and that could be uh, either a flat, like I do 10 damage on an attack, or it could be I do 1 to 10, like a random range. You know? A defense value, I subtract off 3 damage on an attack, or maybe I take 30% less damage, however you want to do it. I'm not, I'm not actually mandating specific game mechanics, I'm just saying you have to have some sort of attack value that makes you stronger. You must have some sort of defense value that makes you stronger on defense. Um, special abilities of some sort and speed. Speed is um, the one is that is like actually required. The other ones you can kind of you kind of play with those however you want, right? Um, so the reason why speed is required is because of uh, bullet point four that we'll get to in a second. Okay. But for the other ones, like however you want to design it, it could, you know maybe. Heroes have a name, you know, that seems reasonable. Maybe they have a class, that seems reasonable. You know, however you want to do it. Uh, if you guys have never played a role-playing game before, by the way, that's what RPG means. Every year I have students ask me why we're making a rocket-propelled grenade. And uh, <laughs> we're not. We're making a role-playing game. So if you've never played a role-playing game before, um, yeah, really, every, every semester, like I'm... I'm so confused. This doesn't seem to have anything to do with a rocket propelled grenade. Yeah. No, role playing game, role playing game. Um, uh, basically, a role playing game. Oftentimes, role playing games are fantasy based, but they don't have to be. You can theme, you can give it whatever theme you want. You can make it be sci fi, you could have it be historical. You're set on Papua New Guinea. I don't know. Like, you can, you can do whatever you want. Uh, it's, all, it's all good. Um, you could be uh, on a cruise ship and the monsters are food that you're trying to eat. I don't know. Like, you know, you, you can theme the thing however you want, but there are some minimum things and the minimum things are in all caps. Okay. So whatever's in all caps, you absolutely must do. The other things are things that, you know, you don't have to do, but you should do, or, you know, like if you make a class that is only speed, like I'd be like, come on. Yeah. Come on. You do better than that. You know what I mean? Like, my hero class is just an integer. My monster class is just an integer. No, no, no. You, you gotta, you gotta, yeah, you gotta put some, put some work into it, right? But if if you're like, yeah, I don't, I don't really have any special abilities, then fine, right? Fine. Okay. Uh, you, or you can add an inventory if you want. If you want to do an inventory system, you have a vector of whatever is. You know, yeah, that's all good too. Okay. Like, like I said, it's. This is an open-ended assignment. This is not an assignment. This is not auto-graded. There is no input tester. There's no unit tests. The, nothing. This is a open-ended assignment. What I am giving you guys is five design criteria, and each one of the design criteria that you do well, you get a letter read. Okay, you and your partner. And um, so if you don't do a world map, then that's a letter read gone. Or a lot of students would use my world map, which is fine, but then they wouldn't have any ability to pick up treasure or bounce off the walls or fight monsters, and so zero, right? Uh, you know, you need to you need to have a minimally functional world map, right? The monsters don't need to walk around. Some people do that, and that's cool. And you will get extra credit. If you impress me with the things, like if you, um, if you make a nice map with rivers and bridges and monsters that will pathfind to you. Like, you, you can go all out on that. Yeah, I'll, heck yeah, I'll give you extra credit on that. So it's it's open-ended. It's a chance to show off your creativity. I'm, I'm a really big fan on uh, the, the notion that computer science is a creative endeavor. That's one of the reasons why I like teaching game development. Game development is very creative. Game development is technically demanding. You will do programming in there that'll stretch your brains and things like that. If you guys ever want more practice programming, take game development. But there's a lot of creativity and there's a lot of, you know, open-ended choices you have to make. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, Kearney, I don't know if you're qualified for this. Do, have you never played a role-playing game, Gox Timer? To make Valheim or Undertale? Scope it down, my man. Scope it down. <laughs> don't. Don't try to recreate Dwarf Fortress or any of these giant 
triple A video games. You got a week. So, you know. I'll give you guys nine days. I'll give you guys till next Friday. Okay. So I'll give you guys nine days on this. Plenty of time. Work on it a little bit every day with your partner. Um, can you use Unreal Engine? Sure. Knock yourself out. You still have to meet all the criteria. So you still have to do all the things. Oh, my camera cut out. Uh, you still have to meet all the design criteria, but if you want to use Unreal Engine, go for it. It'll be fine. Okay. So uh, you must be able to beat the game. There must be an end end game screen. So yeah, and so when you when you make your classes, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be looking through your code, you know, and I want to see if you've done the getters and the setters and the constructors, and you've got different private member variables of different kinds. Like I said, don't just have speed, or I'm just gonna be like, you know, it's like the Roman gladiatorial games. Which I think didn't actually happen, but you know, after the gladiators defeated another person, they would look up at the emperor, and the emperor would go ah, and they would execute him. Didn't actually happen, but metaphorically speaking, that's what will happen now. If, if I look at your code and, and I'm like, really, it's just in it. Okay, but in general, uh, students usually impress me on these things. So uh, I'm, I'm every every year that I do this assignment, I'm always impressed by the creativity. And effort that students put in on this assignment. So this is going to be a 20 point assignment. It's not a 10 point assignment. It's a 20 point assignment. It's worth twice as much as a normal assignment and it is partnered. So um, try to divide up tasks with your partner because these things are actually fairly different. Like you can have you can have one person working on the world map while another person is working on a class, right? These could be in different header files. Like you, you have a header file and and so you can actually split up the files that you're working on, stuff like that. If you guys want to collaborate on the code at the same time, there are different solutions for that. Uh, I've used Code Anywhere before. Code Anywhere uh, allows you to share an editor, so you can actually edit the same file at the same time if you'd like. Um, I guess technically you can give your partner your password if you trust them a lot, and you could both log in and, and edit different files at the same time, be working on it together. We'll talk on Discord. Um, I, I posted in the past a link to a, a, a reference page that had a bunch of different um, collaborative editing tools. Um, there's Vim Collab, which allows you to share Vim screen, stuff like that. Uh, I personally probably wouldn't share my password with anyone unless like, I was very, very trusting of them. I'd probably use Cloud9 or... VS Code, Visual Studio Code on Windows has a code sharing facility. Uh, there's a lot of options. Okay. <clears throat> uh, twice as many points or something, you're twice as likely to fail. <laughs> Don't fail it. Do, your, do, your, do the effort. You, you know how to make a class, right? That's an easy letter grade. Uh, making the world map bounce off the walls and stuff like that, that's easy. You know, um, you can see in the, in the sample source code, how you can get the value of a tile and you're like before i move to tile 50 50 uh get it if it's a wall don't don't move there easy that's an easy letter grade right so you know you do one letter grade you get a 50 right just one like make a class whatever that's it it's 10 points <laughs> just for one of them right and then if you do two of them you get a d if you do three of them, you get a C. If you do four of them, you get a B. And if you do five of them, you get an A. So, and then if you get extra credit, it's, it'll stack lots of extra credit on top of everything else. You said you could do this in Unity? Yeah, if you'd like. You still have to meet the same, you still have to do the same bullet points. But, um, yeah, you can do it in Unity, Unreal Engine, whatever you want. Sure. Um, okay. So, do, 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 uh, you must implement loading and saving. So you must be able to save the world and reload it, which means you must remember how to do F streams, F streams, F streams. So you must be able to save all of the, save the state of the world at any point, quit, save and quit. And then the next time you launch, either have new game or continue. Yep. So that could be a good task for one of the partners to do because you can do that separately from the others, the other work taking place. Um, when walking over a monster, yeah, the map class uh, is, uh, 
there's there's already a map in the code if you want to use it. It's a 2D vector. Um, the map class is not useful for a map. <laughs> we'll, we'll learn maps next, probably. Okay, so here is a, a thing. This is this is always the hardest one. So I, I've given this particular assignment, I think, three years in a row now. And this one is always the hardest one. This one has the lowest compliance level. And so what you have to do is you have to create a linked list in bridges, hey, just like your last homework assignment. So you, there you go. Um, so you just have to make a linked list in bridges and visualize it. So when combat breaks out, create a linked list of all the heroes, all the monsters, you have to have multiple heroes, multiple monsters in a combat. And you basically sort it, hey, like you just did on the last homework assignment. So sort the uh, heroes and monsters by their speed. So whichever uh, hero has or monster has the highest speed, they go first, followed by next, followed by next, followed by next. Visualize it on bridges, and that is your initiative chart. So it shows you, it, it's a graph showing you what order that the combat takes place in. So Sydney has a speed of 15, Charlie has a speed of 8, Bob has a speed of 10, Leela has a speed of 12, Johnson's speed of 9, Cthulhu's speed of 1. And so you see Cthulhu's last because Cthulhu has the slowest speed, Sydney has the highest speed, so she goes first, followed by Leela, followed by Bob. Do you guys understand? So all you have to do is... Um, oh, that's actually two grades. So making a, making a linked list is one grade, and then visualizing it, on bridges is another grade. Okay, so if you guys did the previous homework assignment, um, this is a lot easier because you don't have to um, change the colors or any of that stuff. Okay. You just have to make a linked list on bridges, and you know if I hover over it, you should be like, okay, you you, ho you hover over the first one, okay, that's Sydney, Leela. Uh, it would not be a doubly linked list. In this case, it would be a circular linked list. And so a circular linked list is a linked list in which the tails next is the head and the head's previous is the tail. So uh, it's because initiative, person one goes first, person two goes, you know, da, da, da. When you get to the bottom, it goes back up to the top again. So initiative in combat is a circle, right? Person one goes first, person two goes next, person three goes next. And then after the last person goes, it goes back up to the top again and it just keeps running in a circle. You only have to visualize it once at the start of combat. Okay. So like you don't have to keep updating it. Like when Cthulhu dies, you don't have to like make a new one or any of that stuff. It's very simple. So that's two letter raids for visualize, for making a linked list and then visualizing it in bridges. And so there's sample code in the bridges demo directory. So let me push that out as well, sudo. Boy homework, CSI 41, Bridges Demo. And so that has Bridges Demo. Uh, that has a circular, uh, circular doubly linked list. That's the one you want to look at. And this is made by KR, cool dude from UNCC. And um, you can see here, he is making um, student records, I guess. So you can just basically copy and paste his code. Instead of students, they're heroes and monsters. Okay. Is our first bridges assignment graded or that's manual? Uh, it's both. So I auto grade the mean, median, and mode, and then I go through everything else by hand and I see if you have a memory leak in it. I see if you're using a linked list or if you <clears throat> quasi cheated by using an array. Um, so yeah, I, I'm fairly tolerant on that. But uh, yeah, if you do if you do leak memory, I knock a point off because technically, um, technically, uh, a memory leak isn't going to crash your code. Okay. So what is a memory leak? Let's go. Let's go through that again. I guess uh, vim leak dot cc. You don't want to leak on people, it's rude. So let's say we do this. Um, linked list, uh, class linked list, which has a 
let's template it. We know templates now. Template uh, type name T. So it can hold T's called data, and it holds a linked list pointer to next. And let's just make it a struct because I don't want to go through the process of making a proper class. So uh, let's make a linked list of Doubles. We haven't done anything with doubles in a while. Uh, like list of doubles. Pointer name head equals null pointer. Okay. What happens if you leak memory? Uh, well, what happens is <laughs> your your program will continue to allocate more and more memory as time goes on, and uh, you know, like when Firefox had that bug for ten years. Uh, what you would notice when you pulled up task manager is that uh, you know Firefox's memory, even if you're not doing anything with it really, would just go up and up and up and up and up over time. And so the recommended process for it was to quit it every once in a while and reload the tabs. So that was an open bug for 10 years because it's not a crashing bug. It's not... It's not as critical as a double free or um, a use after free or something like that. They could corrupt memory and all this other stuff. A, a leak is mild in terms of being wrong, but it's still wrong. You don't want to. You don't want to corrupt. You, you you don't want to leak memory, right? Um, and so let's give an example of a memory leak. So. Let's do this. Uh, equals new linked list um, holding 3.1415 and null pointer for the next. Okay. There we go. So we're going to make a linked list of doubles. Its data is going to be set to 3.1415, and its next pointer is going to be set to null. And if I don't specify that, it will set it to null. <laughs> because anything you don't specify is set to zero, and zero is null. So, nice. Okay. Uh, but I like, I like specifying. Okay, so that's it. That's a memory leak. <laughs> G plus plus leak dot cc, um, and I'm going to turn off address sanitizer and all that stuff. And if I run it, absolutely nothing happens. Look, it's fine. Everything's a okay. And that's what a lot of you guys are doing right now. See out head points to data. You know, I'm getting the I'm getting the mean. It's working. I'm not seeing any problems here. Look, everything's fine. Wrong. You are leaking memory. Don't forget the Sith rule. For every new, there must be a delete. Okay. I have a new here. I don't have a delete for it. And so a very common thing that you guys are doing, I graded all of the, anyone who turned in their homework early, you guys got it graded and you got feedback on it and an opportunity to fix it before the actual deadline. So good on you guys for doing it early. Um, benefit. So uh, a lot of you were doing a second linked list and so the 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 regular linked list at the bottom of the code it had it had this right it had it had delete it had you know it had a, a while loop that would delete everything uh, however if you made your own list you didn't delete it because the the way that uh, the bridges people did it there's no actual list class the list class that I made has a destructor in it that frees the, the list they're just doing it raw right there's just a pointer called head and then at the end of the file, um, they didn't delete it either. They had a <clears throat> they had a memory leak in their code too, and I fixed it because I don't like having memory leaks in my code. Uh, so at the bottom of the code, I added that that while loop there where it goes through and it deletes the list. But if you made a second list, like to copy things into a second list to, to sort it, 90% uh, of you guys did not delete the second list. Okay. And so this is this is correct now. So I've got a new, I've got a delete. I compile it now and run it. Everything's fine. 
look, there's no difference. How, you know, what difference does it make? Well, I'll show you. If I compile it with Azure Sanitizer turned on, my code works. If, however, I forgot to delete the linked list, then Azure Sanitizer will. Do I have? Oh, I don't have Azure Sanitizer turned on. Uh, let's see. Uh, compile leak.cc. Memory leak. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Azure Sanitizer will tell you you leak memory, right? And so this is not as lethal as corrupting memory. It's not as lethal as a crash, a core dump, double free, any of that kind of stuff. But it's still bad. It's one point off your homework assignment bad. Yep. So direct leak of 16 bytes of memory uh, that was made on line 16. So then leak.cc, remember this, plus 16. You guys remember that? If you want to leak.cc line 16, if you want to go to line 16, that's how you do it. Boom. That's where we leaked memory. Yep. Right there. So I thought you had to sort the list with all the data in each node. Uh, all you need was a magnitude value. Either way. Either way you want to sort it. Um, but I wanted you guys to... Uh, I wanted you guys to do it using a linked list because the whole point of this last homework assignment was to give you guys more experience working with pointers, working with linked lists. Um, and hopefully you guys learned something from that. Um, getting more confident with it because even though we don't work as much with pointers these days, you still got to know them. Like, and we still use them, right? They're not entirely gone. Dash F sanitize equals address turns on address sanitizer, yeah. Or you use the compile shell script that turns it on too. It's less typing. Uh, currente, how do you turn on address sanitizer again? Uh, become currente um, alias G. It's already turned on for you. So if you compile if you compile your code with G, it'll be on. If, however, you use a make file, it's not on. So if I were to compile, try to make a make file, then uh, a.out .out depends on leak.cc. Uh, if I just said g++ leak.cc, this does not use my alias. This does not have Azure Sanitizer turned on. So you have to put into here dash f sanitize equals address. And now Azure Sanitizer will be turned on. So a lot of you guys didn't know this because it wasn't in the make file. Okay. I pushed magnitudes into a vector and sorted it for mean, median, and mode, uh, but used the L for everything else. Yes, you, you're going to lose a point for that. It's fine. It's still an A. A lot of you guys are still getting A's. You're just getting a 9A instead of a 10A. It's not a big deal. Do, go go above and beyond on the on the RPG, and there will be many many points available for extra credit. So for RPG forty one, um, there is no extra credit section listed here, but if you were to do anything neat, and that's com completely subjective on my part, if I think it's neat, then you will get extra credit. One letter raid, two letter raid, three letter raids maybe, and since this is a double double weighted assignment, um, yeah, do it. All right. So uh, that's basically our lecture for today. Go through template demo. Um, if if you're if you want just to see what templates look like and to practice working on them. Um, or just start communicating with your, your partner now. Yep. Could have left your vector and still got an A. Yeah, but it was good for you. It's good for you. It's a good experience. <laughs> you, you have to you have to sort the linked list using using a linked list. Right. The whole mean, mean, median, and mode thing was a letter grade. So if you if you just didn't do it at all, you would have still gotten a B. Right. And so if you did it by you know not sorting linked list, then half that. Uh, 
the implementation of their class was confusing. No, it's 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 a really simple class. Like, um, I mean, I, I mean, fair enough. Like, bridges, uh, earthquakes. Um, it's literally, you know, you just have a link to, like that super basic linked list class that I just made. That's it. That's what they have. It is. It's got a next, and it's got a um, what is it? Get something. Get get value. So they don't call it data. They call it value. So that's it. They got a next. They got a value. That's it. And they don't have a list class. It's just a raw pointer, and that pointer is either null or it's pointing at something. And yeah, and so you can see how simple the code is for a linked list. And iterating across a linked list is really, really simple. It just melts your brain the first time you see it. Um, make every variable named Robotech. <laughs> you got to run around and harvest protoculture plants or something like that. Um, flowers of life, is that what it's called? Yeah, Flower of Life, there we go. which was actually not really part of the original Robotech series. I think part of the Invid invasion. The Harmony Gold people took took three different animes and and like mashed them together into one. Because what happened was Robotech was called Macross, right? And in Japan. And so they had Macross, which was about space aliens attacking Earth and the super dimensional fortress and things like that. And then there was a completely separate um, anime called uh, about the Invid invasion. And then there was a third one that was about uh, this called Southern Cross. And, and so Harmony Gold just sort of said, they're all Robotech and sort of loosely tried to connect these three different animes that are completely different together into the same universe. And they used... Um, protoculture as the uh, uh, bridge between those three series. Like I said, it, it's not it's not really the high point of anime, but um, people people got into it, and that was really really the start of you know anime. What's my favorite anime? Anime? Uh, do, 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 do. It's a good question. Evangelion's got to be up there. Um, it's just. You know, one of those all-time great animes. Uh, I like Knights of Sidonia. Um, Blame. Uh, Full Metal Alchemist, of course. Uh, Death Notes, all right. Um, man. It's, hard, hard, it's a hard question to answer. It's a hard question to answer. Knights of Sidonia by Muse is completely unrelated to Knights of Sidonia, the anime, unfortunately. Do you still watch new anime or just old ones you watched when growing up? Uh, yeah, I watch new ones. Um, I'm just drawing a blank off the top of my head what I've watched recently. Um, a friend of mine just told me that Free Kuri FLCL has some new seasons, so I'm probably going to watch those. Cowboy Bebop, yeah, yeah. Cowboy Bebop, Samurai Champloo, classics. Um, man. This is hard. It's hard to answer a question like that. Like, what's your favorite movie of all time? It's like... Yeah. Uh, Pokemon. <laughs> um, yeah. And so... Th that's that's really it for the, for the class. <laughs> yeah, it's, you got a next, you got a value, and that's really it. Um, yeah. So to iterate across it, while current's not null pointer, current equals current points to next. That's, that's it. That's all it takes to iterate across a linked list. Um, part of the assignment was to go through the documentation. Like I, I, I part of part of my goal for this class is to make you guys independent programmers rather than dependent upon me to provide all the information. And so it's like I, I'm gonna have you guys do what I do, which is like you look up the documentation and like, all right, what's the name? You know, what's the name of the um, What's the name of the functions? You know, we got red. What other colors are available? Right? What shapes are available? And so, um, yeah, that's this is what programmers do. We find documentation and kind of browse through it and see how things are done. Find example code and see how it's done. And that's 
that's life, you know, as a programmer. It's like, you don't have people handing things to you. You go through the documentation line, you know, and learn about it that way. And so the Bridges people are putting together more documentation. One of the feedback I gave them was it'd be neat if there was more documentation because uh, a lot of the Bridges documentation is just like, here, let me pull it up. Uh, set time sets the time. Set title sets the title. Set URL sets the URL. You know what I mean? It's like, okay. I mean, they're kind of self documenting. Set longit, set longitude, right? Get year, get year, right? And so um, one of the feedback I gave them was to have uh, more thorough documentation. And they've actually taken a, a grad student and task her with uh, apparently she's like really into documentation so she's going to be putting together more tutorials and more documentation stuff like that so uh, the UNCC people really are good to work with they're, they're good people and um, they're actively working on improving and stuff like that for you guys it's for your benefit so. um, best waifu <laughs> uh, the abbreviate set longitude to launch it yeah yeah um, yeah, and so a part of being a programmer is just being able to pull up documentation and figure out what you need to do from it, you know? So that's, that's one of the hidden objectives that I had for that last assignment, so be able to pull those things up and see what you can find, write code from it. Okay, so I think that's it for today. Um, any other questions? They do have a return zero at the end. Technically, technically it's not necessary. All right, well, that's it, guys. Uh, Crente, is, Crente is typing something. Let's see if... Uh... She's bought... And then uh, I believe uh, Mumia posted his uh, in curses map maker that I looked at earlier. And so this is a program that you can use to generate um, maps for your RPG assignment. So he made that over winter break. I also just added to the readme at the bottom um, uh, information on how to read from a file that has Unicode in it, because you do have to do a little bit of extra work. Just yeah. that file imbue line, really. Okay. So. Cool. Yeah. So you have to use a wide, a wide um, character stream. Yeah. Yeah. A narrow character stream means like ASCII. It's one byte per character. A wide character can be wider than that. Uh, UTF-8 is backwards compatible with ASCII. It's a neat system, uh, but it also includes Unicode as well. So, um, yeah, that's my daughter. So yeah. So he's got this thing here, and you can uh, you can use his Incurses Map Maker to generate a map and save it to disk, and then use that rather than what I gave you. What I give you is just a random map generator, which just spits out random walls and random lakes and stuff like that. So you use either; it's all good. Okay. Um, did you pin this, Muya? Yeah, okay, good. Okay. All right, that's it for today, guys. Thanks a lot.